Hello, welcome to the course, Application of Deep Learning. I'm going to take you through the first module session and show you some, just an overview of what we're going to cover in the course and show you all of the material that you'll need in order to complete this course. Okay, each of the, you'll, you'll notice the course is broken into 10 modules. This is the first module. Each module will have a recorded lesson video like this, as well as reading material. I'm going to show you how to get into each of those parts of the course in this, in this first video. Each of the modules will have a brief overview just like this. Each module will have several videos. They'll be called parts. This is just part one of module one. I try to keep the videos relatively short so that you can look at the individual components of each of the modules and review and look at just the ones that you need if you need to replay any of them. This one we're going to just do the course overview, uh, the course format, and just an introduction to working in Python. The course overview. This is deep learning. We are working with Keras and TensorFlow. Let me give you an introduction to myself. I am a adjunct mem faculty member here at Washington University. I primarily teach this class in deep learning. I am also a lead data scientist at Reinsurance Group of America. And I use this sort of technology all the time in my, in my day job at, in the analysis of data for the insurance industry. I have a master's of, of uh, information management from here at Washington University. I also have a PhD in computer science. I am a senior member of the IEEE and the author of a couple of books related to, to these technologies. I have my email address there at WashU. That's the primary means of communicating with me for this course. This course focuses primarily on the application of deep learning. We will use Google TensorFlow and Keras. So as a result, we won't go heavy duty into the theory of deep learning and all of the mathematics behind it. We'll have an overview of, of those topics. And if you want to ask me more information about them, I would be glad to uh, give you some links or provide you with additional information on the lower level details of this. Uh, it is, however, a technical course, so we will be using the Python programming language. If you've never dealt with Python before, that's okay, but I do expect that you've dealt with at least one or maybe two programming languages prior to. I will have several, um, several videos that will try to get you up to speed quickly on the Python programming language, and by all means, we will not go heavy duty on Python. We will do enough Python to get the, the deep learning um, components of this class working and you able to, to submit your assignments. We will do predictive modeling. That's sort of your classic data science with deep learning. So we will see how you can give it several columns of something in Excel and pick another column where it learns to predict that value, maybe looking into the future, doing forecasting. We will also look at the next two areas that I show you down here, where is real, which is really where deep learning shines compared to traditional machine learning models. Computer vision and time series in particular is where deep learning is really, really powerful. Deep learning has done things with recognizing images that we were previously not able to do, and there's new advances all the time in computer vision, some of which we will incorporate with the course even, even as it's going. Time series is basically dealing with events that occur over time. The classic example of this is stock market prediction, uh, just looking at financial markets and trying to predict where things are going. But there's other uses for time series that you might not think of, like speech recognition. Because speech recognition is listening to the audio of your voice as it goes through, through time. There is also uh, natural language processing, which is basically looking at characters as they go through time, as sentences go through the computer. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through all three of these in particular and look at applications of each. And you'll get to try out implementing each of these in the Python programming language. So the course format for this, it, this is a hybrid course. There is in-class lecture. There is also um, an online component. You're watching the online component right now. 
the course module. So I try to break this course up into individual modules. Each module is designed to take approximately a week. We won't meet every week. There will be a weekly video in addition to the module videos that I will post literally as the class is going. So if you ask me questions in, in emails and I see that one particular question is predominant, I will I will usually answer these questions right in that actual video. And those will go for maybe about 10 minutes. And they will also cover any sort of new information that I see in the deep learning field as we're, as we're going through it. There will be several in-class meetings. To get the exact schedule for those, look at the first, uh, the first update video that I should ha already have posted to the, to the course site. There I will review the semester by semester specifics of what dates you will need to be in class and, and that sort of information. It's very important in this sort of hybrid class that you stay on top of the videos and don't just watch every single video right before an assignment. So that's why we do have one small assignment a week. Rather than giving you a couple of large assignments as the semester progresses, I give you one assignment a week and each one is due at the end of the week. The syllabus that you that is attached to the uh, to the WashU um, learning management system that you should have gotten an email about will give you links to the uh, current syllabus and the syllabus explains all of the assignments and when they're due and the specific dates for each each semester. There'll be a final project uh, in the area of security. There will also be a Kaggle project. Kaggle is a competitive website for data scientists and machine learning experts. So you will get to do a Kaggle in class um, competition submission just to get experience with the Kaggle format and, and learn, um, learn about that. The video formats, so there will be three different types of videos that you will see linked in through the um, WashU learning management system. There will be module videos. You're watching one of those right now, so I assume you found those. There will also be um, weekly updates and uh, a, a class meeting recording. There will also be weekly videos like this one where I will just go through whatever we're talking about for the current week just to give you updates and to answer any questions that people might have sent me that could be applied to the whole class. These will just be shot very quickly from my laptop's webcam or even my iPhone, and they'll be wherever I happen to be at at the time. They could be my home office, or they could be on the road somewhere, or even Starbucks. But these will just give you some updates and let you know what we're covering, and they'll be about probably five to ten minutes in length each week. There is also an in-class component to this um, course. It is very important that you attend the class sessions that are held at Washington University. There are only four of them, so attendance is absolutely mandatory. I will record these sessions so that you can review them at a later time. There will be no video. It will just be a screencast where you'll see PowerPoint slides and other things as I go. You'll basically see my computer screen. If I happen to use the uh, in-class whiteboard or chalkboard, I'll just display that probably a single picture. You won't actually see me creating them. So those will be primarily for you to review the course sessions that you have already seen. As far as the assignments for this course, there will be a class attendance and participation uh, component to your score. For this, look to the syllabus for the exact details on this, but your attendance in the four um, in the four class sessions is critical to this and also just a few a, a few things that I might ask you to do in terms of posting on the forum and other other components to the class. There will be 10 module assignments so not every module will have a assignment because there are more than 10 of them but uh, the ones where there is not that's when the Kaggle project or the final project are due and you can see the relative weighting of, of the scores there. This is the grading scale. This is standard for the Washington University School of Engineering. So this is basically the, the cutoffs for these. 
you will be able to see your grade through the uh, learning management system as, as I grade your assignments. So it, it should be quite clear where you're at and what grade you currently have. Okay, working in Python. So Python is a major component of this, of this class. You will learn, at the end of this class, you will learn, you will know how to actually set up a neural network in Python using Cura's and bring in real data. You have several options for how to, how to work with Python. I have a couple of the uh, logos of the products we'll be using. We'll use Anaconda Python. It's a free scientific variant of Python, so it's got a lot of what you need already installed. And we'll use Jupyter Notebooks. That's sort of the IDE or the, the tool that we'll use to actually enter the source code and, um, and see if your programs are working. Now you have several options for using Python in this class, and I have supplemental videos on all three of these. The first is just to locally install Python on your computer. There's a number of packages you'll have to install. You'll have to install TensorFlow. You'll have to install the correct version of Python before any of that, and Keras and some of the other uh, supplemental material. In the course module um, reading material, I have complete instructions on that, and I have a video that shows you how I literally set up a new uh, Python instance for this class from scratch. Using this, you will use the Jupyter Notebook, or you can use an IDE. If you're more familiar with IDEs like Eclipse or uh, PyCharm or a whole variety of them, Spider is another popular one, If you can use that environment. I also have a pre-built Docker image uh, that I provide that has all the course material installed. If you already know how to do Docker, that might be an option for you. I also have a video showing how to, how to use my uh, Docker image. And then there's also the IBM Data Science Workbench. This has TensorFlow, all, most of the stuff we need for the course installed. The only thing it doesn't have is Keras, and you can install that. I also have a video for IBM Data Science Workbench that runs completely in the cloud, and you don't have to install anything on your local computer. If your computer is older or weaker, this third option is, is usually a, a good idea. Deep learning can be fairly computationally intensive. We'll try to stay away from overly compute intensive assignments because I don't want you to have to fit your neural network model for 10 hours or so just for, a, uh, just for an assignment. But we'll try to keep the data set smaller uh, and these are the three ways that you can, you can make use of that. Now using the Python language, we'll be using something called Jupyter Notebook a fair amount for Python. So you can literally just write through a website. This is a website and it will, it runs basically from your local computer when you install it. Or if you're using the IBM Data Science Workbench, you have something almost just like this, but it is running in the cloud. You can basically enter Python as you, as you like and run it and it actually executes it. So really anything you put into here, it will actually execute. Just basic Python code, count from one to 10. Of course, counting starting with zero. In addition to using, using Python, there are other resources that you will, that you will want to make use of. Everything is linked in through the Washington University Learning Management System. You should have gotten an email from me very, very early on in the semester, as soon as, I, as soon as it's available to me anyway, that welcomes you to the class and gives you a link to that. That is the WashU system of record that will have your grades and everything that I will post. All the links to everything you would need for this course is there. Some of the information is stored externally, but like I said, there will be links to it. The information that you will want to have for this will be the, my own instructor site at Washington University, my GitHub site. There is a lot of source code that goes through with this class. I give you source code examples of just about everything that we go through. Source code really lives best in Git. If you haven't used it before, it's a social 
coding site. It's almost like Facebook for, for computer code. We will also use Piazza, which is a question and answer site. So if you have questions about the assignments or other things, you should make use of Piazza and post your question there. And I will monitor that and post a, a response to you. Other students can also answer answer this. So you, you have a variety of, uh, of options there for seeking additional help. You can also email me at any time at my WashU email address. And we'll also use Kaggle for a couple of, uh, for one of the assignment submissions. You will actually create a model and submit uh, data responses for a Kaggle in class competition that I will post later in the semester. So here is some of the course information that will be useful for you. This is my instructor website at Washington University. There is a link to it in the, in the course uh, module information. If you need to find it really quickly, you can just Google my name, Jeff Heaton space uh, W-U-S-T-L, and it, that's usually the first thing that pops up on Google. And this is the, just the general information on the course website. This updates as for each future semester of the, of the course. I have links to all of the information here that is, that is useful. The GitHub link is probably the most important thing that you, will want to, that you will want to look at. This is where all of the course material that I will take you through, these are the reading assignments essentially for each of the modules. And they're broken up by module or by class you will see basically a, um, you'll see semester specific information talking about where the, the, the course meetings will occur and dates specific to whatever semester this is currently on. If you go into one of these files, these are all Jupyter Notebook files. If you view them online, um, GitHub allows you, to, allows you to view them, but you can't actually run anything. This is text information intermixed with Python code. So if you, like here is information on how to install uh, your, own, your own TensorFlow environment. But when you get to code like this, since we're just viewing it on GitHub, you can't actually run it. If you were running this from your local computer, you could, or data science workbench or wherever you chose to do it, you could actually run this. And this is a handy snippet of code. It tells you what version of Python you have and what version of TensorFlow. Now this will vary depending on the semester, so don't take the video for, um, for its word here because I tend to update the class as future versions of TensorFlow are, uh, are released by Google. So to actually run this code, you need to launch it in uh, your own Jupyter Notebook so that you can double click it and then change the code. For more information on that, look at the, uh, the, the Python introduction video that that also accompanies this, this module. And that is the end of module, uh, part one for module one.